Hey, Buff Nation, voice of the bus, Mark Johnson here. Coming up this week in the Buffalo Stampede, we're going to talk a whole lot of basketball. The CU men have won five games in a row. We're talking with Jabari Walker and associate head coach Mike Rohn. And how about the CU women, ranked 22nd of the country, 13-0, the last undefeated team in the nation. We'll chat with head coach J.R. Payne and junior point guard Jalen Sherrod. All this week on the Buffalo Stampede. Dimitri Stanley is going to take it to the here is why he's one of the best linebackers in America. And there he goes! Touchdown! <laughs> right between the eyes from downtown. And a boy Lolo! <laughs> it's a winner for the Buff. <laughs> Wallace right in front, a couple of shot fakes to see Perry. Tad Boyle with his 300th career coaching victory. You shout out Coach Leon Wins. I've been a part of, you know, a bunch of them, but, you know, I love you, Coach. That's a big time. I've been around for a while, and I've coached really good players, and I've had a great, great staff. So this this is on everybody. I haven't scored a point or got a rebound, but I appreciate you guys. All right, good job. Got it. Family on three. One, two, three. Family. Career win number 300 for Tad Boyle during his 16-year college basketball coaching career. His 12th here at CU, four at Northern Colorado before he got here. Hi, everybody. Voice of the Bus, Mark Johnson. Welcome to the Buffalo Stampede. Colorado gets a sweep over the weekend. Knocking off Washington State and Washington. This guy was huge in both games, Jabari Walker. First off, a little bit of celebration in the locker room there? Uh, yeah. Uh, I didn't realize until after the game it was his 300th win. So uh, just knowing that, it, it was exciting. What is it for playing with Tad? I mean, all the guys that have come through this program over my 18 years here talking with Tad, what is it about Tad? What is it about that you guys, you know, what resonates with you playing for him? He's like, he's a unique coach. He, he makes adjustments. It's huh. not just about uh, like a system, but depending on what players he has, he, he, he adjusts to those guys and uh, he'll pull you in his office, have conversation with you. He's very, uh, like, uh, I don't know how to explain. I don't know how to say it, but he, he likes building those relationships. He's man. deliberate though about the way he approaches things. Yeah. I mean, he he knows there's that old line. There's six inches between a kick in the tail and a, and a pat in the back, right? And, yeah. and Tad knows when. Exactly. You need those he knows things. when to get the best out of you. He knows yeah. when you need encouragement. He just he reads that really well, and uh, a player loves that. Yeah. So 300 career wins for Tad Boyle. Uh, come number 300 comes against Washington. Let's go back to that Wazoo game on Thursday night. We missed you in the first half, by the way, yeah. right? We yeah. didn't get to see you, Jabari, all that first <laughs> half. But you had 16 in the second half. Talk about overall as a team that win against a quality opponent. Yeah, uh, it was a, it was a big win. I think um, I I kind of had the mindset of making plays uh, coming out in, in that game. Uh, in the past, I've I've been more offensive minded and. I just realized that there's so much gap help and there's so much attention towards me, so I'm going to just let the game come to me in the second half. Uh, they got a little lax with it. The help wasn't there as much, so I was like, okay, now the game's opening up a little bit, uh, and some of the shots started falling. When you have a half like that where you don't play much foul trouble, and you, you, you know you walk out, you don't have any points at halftime, yeah. are you, in the front of your mind, you want to come out and be more aggressive in the second half? Um, yeah, it's, yeah. truthfully, you do, but at the same time, you realize that you don't want to pick up another foul. You don't. You don't want to um, force anything, and it's, it's tough. I don't, I don't like scoring everything in the second half. Te teams are going to start to pick up on that, and I don't want to. I don't want to force things. So I just whatever happens happens. Um, just want to get my team to win. And I was I was coaching from the sideline today, just encouraging everybody in the first half. So the Buffaloes get a nice win on Thursday night over Washington State. Afterward, we heard from head coach Tad Boyle. Kill this dribble now. Leaps and lobs on the right block. Taken by Evans. Squares up. Pulls up for 15. Yes. A well, good win. Uh, wasn't the prettiest uh, performance by us, especially in the first half. But you know, this team continues to find ways to win games. You know, late in, in tough situations. Really proud of the way they played as a group. And you know, 17 assists tonight is is a really really good number for us. So that means we're playing together. You know, the last three weeks where we haven't played games and we've had workouts and or practices, we've gotten a lot of shots up. Our guys, I think, it, it showed tonight. We made open shots when we had to, especially in the second half. We shot 64% from the field. Going into the game against Washington State, they're one of the best defensive teams in the country in terms of field goal percentage defense, and we shoot 51% against them. 
that's pretty good because they're a good defensive team. So I thought guys did a good job on that end of the ball. We, you know, we turned it over a little bit too much, especially in that first half. We ended up with 17 turnovers. That's that's too many. But we figured out a way, and, and we guarded at the end when we had to, and it was a good, good win for the Buffs. Well, there was Tad Boyle up the Buffaloes, knock off the Cougars of Washington State on Thursday, then on to Sunday as the Buffaloes then knock off Washington here at the uh, CU Event Center. Impressive game. We're kind of a workman kind of game for you guys. You, didn't, again, didn't play a lot of minutes in the first half. You got yourself a little bit of foul trouble. But, boy, everybody was involved, weren't they? Yeah, definitely. I was just uh, saying that we don't even realize how much depth we have yeah. because guys are still proving themselves and improving every day. We just... It could be anybody's night. Uh, we have so so many skilled players. Everybody can put the ball in the basket, and we just have so many tools. And I'm excited. How much you got, Tristan, you know, against the Huskies? 22 points, career high for him. He's really got a unique game. I, you guys are, are kind of a couple of twin towers out there for this uh -huh. program. I, I love you two young players. The way you guys are both highly skilled guys. Talk about what you appreciate about Tristan. Yeah, I, really, I, I love playing with him because he's so unselfish. Like if you look at all his buckets today, it, it was it was timely. We, we needed those buckets. Uh, he didn't force anything and. He's better than me with that because I, uh, I, I probably, if I was uh, going like that, I probably would have forced a couple shots. Sure. And with uh, everything falling for him, he just still continued to take the right shot. So I'm learning from him, and he's learning from me to even be more aggressive at times because I think there's times where he could even attack more. Jabari had 11 points and 13 rebounds in, in this ball game. Have you always been a good rebounder? What's the key to rebound? Uh, key to, I think it's like a feel, a feel for the game, really. Um, it's, it has a lot to do with IQ. Yeah. yeah. As the ball comes off the rim. Uh, noticing where the guy shoot, sure. shoots it, positioning yourself before he shoots it. Um, yeah, just paying attention to the little details. Great stuff out there. Seventh double-double, by the way, the season for Jabari Walker as he and the Buffaloes get the victory over Washington and sweep the weekend series against the Washington schools. Coming up next, we're going to talk with associate head coach Mike Rohn here on the Stampede. Leads it left side. Bethelby dumps it inside. Walker the catch turns in a slam with two hands. Nice seal. Bethelby lobbing the ball in. Keyshawn looking dumps it under the bucket. Caught by Jabari Walker in the lane. Back to Jabari. Shot clock at six. Drives against Gay in the paint. Down the lane. Goes up strong with the right hand. Court left. Hands off. Jabari Walker turns the corner down the paint. Comes to a jump stop. Steps through. Hook pass is up. Angers hook shot runner is up and good. Count a whistle in the foul. The Buffalo's attack. Four court left. Splits the double team down the paint. Throws the runner. Shot will go. Oh, the follow jam. Jabari Walker. Walker, somebody shot him out of a cannon. There's Jabari Walker in the second half. In fact, he was extremely quiet in the first half. At 16 points in the second half, Buffalo's get the victory over Wazoo here at the event center and up sweeping the weekend against Washington. Associate head coach Mike Rohn joining us here for a couple of minutes. Uh, let's go back to that Washington State game. First off, Washington State's a pretty quality basketball team you guys were able to beat on Thursday night. Yeah, they're, they're very good. We knew after last year they were, they were going to be a good team this year, and I, they proved that with their win at, at Utah yeah. uh, yesterday. So we, we knew they were going to be good. We got lucky with them not having Noah Williams right. uh, out for COVID, and obviously, you know, they had him against Utah. But yeah, they're a very good team, very good defensively, top 30 in the country. So that was a really good win for us, and uh, that program just keeps getting better. Like this young team is interesting to me. And, you know, Tim and I talked before the season began. He said, Mark, we're going to have some scratch your head moments. We're going to have some, I can't believe what I just saw moments. But this group's coming. They're, they're growing, aren't they? Yeah, they, they are. And, and that's what happens with young teams. And sometimes when you're young and you get a play, you're, you're going to get better. You know, it's just, it's just the, the, the process of what's happening. The interesting thing with this group is that they've kind of like found a way to win close games, yeah. you know, and, and played better down the stretch in big games and, and close them out. And that's, that's not typical of, of young teams. So we're excited about where this team can still go. I was going to say, yeah, that, that is an interesting aspect. Normally, you learn, we always talk in sports about learning how to win, right? Young teams have to learn how to win. Your guys now in this season are what? I think it's eight and one in games that are within two possessions with four minutes left. Yeah, that's that's an interesting innate characteristic for a young team to have. It's very interesting, and we're better offensively during that stretch, and and that's what is unique. And uh, it's just you know a tribute to you know the guys. They're pretty good players. Yeah. Now maybe maybe they need to play 40 minutes that way, and and uh, <laughs> we're, we're working on that. How about Julian Hammond against Washington State? He had what four rebounds, four steals. Had a great game against Washington. Here's a guy that you know could have been a college quarterback. Decides he wants to play college basketball. He plays like a quarterback, doesn't he? There's, there's, there's a yes. savvy, a moxiness about him on the court. We always knew that about Julian. And his, his, his football coach, you know, Dave Logan, would always talk about that with him, um, about you know what kind of you know moxie he had yeah. and, and um, you know calmness about him and, and he does play like a quarterback and, and we need that and he's always ready he's a confident kid so 
you know, we're excited about him, you know, right now, and we're, we're excited about where he's going to be, you know, now that he's just focusing full time on basketball. Yeah, he had 14 points, by the way, in the victory over the Washington Huskies. In fact, let's hear from head coach Tad Boyle after he picked up his 300th career victory against UW. The baseline keeps the dribble alive, cross court pass key in the corner, pulls up high arcing three, nothing but nothing. another conference win, which, you know, you got to take those, they're like gold, you know, especially early out of the gate and at home. Really important that we take care of home court advantage, and we were able to do that, you know, uh, this weekend. And, and Washington's a team, they were down 14 against Utah the other night in the second half with like 13 minutes to go, and they came back and won. So we, uh, and when they cut it to six, I said, okay, here we go again. And, and uh, But our guys bowed their back, and we did a much better job in the second half of taking care of the basketball. Obviously, the 11 turnovers in the first half were, that's what we want for the game, not for the half. So. Did a much better job of that. We rebounded the ball well. Had some really good performances, I thought, off our bench. And figured out a way to beat you know, a good, solid team tonight. And uh, it doesn't get it easier. So you know, now we got to take this show on the road. Number 300 for Chad Boyle as he and the Buffaloes knock off the Washington Huskies. We continue with associate head coach Mike Rowan. Let's get to that Washington game a little bit. You knew going in where Mike Hopkins came from with Jim Beheim, that 2-3 zone defense. That created some problems, and you guys struggled with it in the first half a little bit, didn't you? We did, and we haven't been zoned a lot this year, Mark. You know, And that's something we thought we would see a little earlier in the season because we haven't been a team that's been a great three-point shooting team right. yet, and we don't shoot a lot of them. You know, Washington State did a little bit against us the other night, which was probably good to just give, give us a zone look. So anytime you play them, it's such a unique defense. It takes a little while to, like, get adjusted to it because yeah. uh, it is unique to, to their style. So we, we were excited about how, how the game ended and how we just kind of kept plugging away with it. And, you know, obviously our turnovers in the first half weren't great. But the passing angles are all different, and, and we kind of settled in and, and uh, got it figured out. you got to be strong with the ball. The Buffaloes were. They only had three turnovers in in the second half. Tristan DeSilva is a guy that I've always been fascinated by. I think he's a highly skilled guy, smart player. He gave us some flashes with 22 points against the Huskies. He was awesome. You know, he, was, he just keeps getting better and better, and that's what young guys do when they get to play more. And we're really excited about where he's, you know, where he's at right now and where, where he keeps going. All right. Always good to get those wins at home, isn't it? Always. <laughs> the Buffs get the sweep over the Washington schools. Two wins against Wazoo and Washington. Now they move on to take on number eight Arizona on Thursday night. Coming up next, we're going to talk undefeated women's basketball with Jalen Sherrod, the point guard for the Buffaloes. Second foul for Jalen Penn. That counts as the 18th turnover, and Colorado's going to convert it. Towards overtime. Holly Shed. Yes! For three. <laughs> An unblemished record for their first 13 games. Oh, like the old song says, the beat goes on for the CU women's basketball team undefeated. There we see some highlights of the bus victory over UCLA. Big hug there between Clay Miller and J.R. Payne back in the stampede. Voice of the bus, Mark Johnson. Jalen Sherrod doing against. Wait till we talk about the game she had against UCLA. We will do that in just a moment here. All right, let's go back to that game on Friday versus USC. You guys are undefeated. You're playing great basketball. Got to take us through that ball game against the Trojans. Um, the game was, was tough. That was our first uh, Pac-12 game. Um, and USC is a good opponent. They're really big inside. So uh, we just had to stick to the game plan. We had to be aggressive. We had to trust in each other. And we had to be really disciplined on defense. And I think that's what won us the game. As time goes on and you keep racking up the victories, you're one of two undefeated teams in America right now. Does that increase pressure or do you kind of embrace that? Or how do you approach that? Um, I want to say it increases pressure because we always talk about just being one and oh that game. So, of course, we look at the record overall. But at the end of the day, we want to be one and oh every night. So we were one and oh on Friday. We're one and oh again. Uh, uh, today and that's just the mentality we've always taken and uh, it really doesn't matter about the record because at the end of the day um, we just we have to depend on each other and no matter when lose or draw it, it's just about us at the end of the day. You know I've had a chance to broadcast a few of the women's games this year when I watch you and other games I've watched as well I see a maturation process happen. You're really growing as a player. How do you feel you're different now this year? Um, 
think the biggest thing is just focusing in on what I can do to uh, help the team and just uh, doing my role. I think last year um, after I had surgery and I was sitting out that, um, I mean, of course that process sucked, but at the same time, I think that gave me a lot of opportunity to actually just grow up and learn the game. And so I think that that process really was a blessing in disguise for me because it allowed me to just build my IQ while I was sitting out supporting my teammates. You know, it's funny she says that. We, in sports, we always talk about, well, they can take mental reps. And I always wonder if that's real. So you're saying there's great right value in that. Yeah, I mean, I was sitting down a lot of times right next to Coach Jay, uh, building, uh, looking at plays and yep. calling plays and seeing why she would call certain plays. So I think it really helped. Are you going to get a coaching someday? I hope so. <laughs> well, there, there you go. It was an internship for you. After the uh, USC game, we heard from head coach J.R. Payne. Sherrod finds a shooter in the corner. Got it. Frida Foreman does. You know what? I wasn't real sure what tonight's game was going to look like. Um, you know, because both teams have not played in a while. You know, this is the longest break we've had in between games, I think, since 1979. You know, and so that's a very long time. But I am unbelievably proud of my ball club. We were tough. We were resilient. We pushed through. You know, I think every team in the country is facing some level of adversity at this point of the year. Um, but I knew that our response would be tough, you know, and gritty and uh, very excited, you know, to start Pac-12 with a win um, against a good USC team and just really proud of, of who we are. Not even necessarily what we did. I'm proud of who we are as a ball club and um, excited to go 1-0 today. Well, that was head coach J.R. Payne after the Buffaloes accused the 12-0 of the season as they knocked off USC. Then on Sunday, in a doubleheader with the men's team, they had an early game against UCLA. Pretty competitive ball game. Take us into the third quarter. You guys really kind of separated from the Bruins late in that third quarter, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I think it was just sticking to the game plan. Like, we knew UCLA was a tough team. We knew they had a lot of time off, so the game was, um, they were fresh, honestly. And we had just played on Friday, and they didn't end up playing Utah, so we just knew we had to do what we had to do. Um, and I think it, this game really came down to just sticking to the game plan. Because um, it was tough the whole game, as, as you all saw, it was very tough. But we just stuck to the game plan, and that's what got us the win. Jay hit 25 points, by the way, career high in his victory. During that stretch of third quarter, Frida Foreman had a big three. That, that kind of tilted things, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, anytime Frida gets a three, I think it just lights up the whole gym. Like, yeah. it just brings the uh, uh, electricity to the game. And I think um, for her to be finding her shot, because she struggled in the beginning of the year, but her um, resiliency to keep working at it and to keep going for it, I think that just – motivates the rest of the team to see how she's, she's pulling herself out of that slump. How about your 25? Did you know before the ball game that you were going to have a nice night? Um, I mean, you always hope for a nice night, but um, I think I just kind of just kept my uh, foot on the gas and just kept going at them, and it was working, so I didn't see a reason to stop. It's been a while since the Buffaloes have beaten the Bruins, by the way, so big win, 13-0. All right, and now things get kind of serious, don't they? You got Callum Stamper coming in. You know what that means, but it's right here at home. Big week for you guys. Yeah, I mean, I think Stanford weekend is like everybody. Yeah. Um, you know, um, it sucked last year. We didn't have fans here when we actually beat them and they were the number one team in the country. So I think that's kind of like, at, even though we beat them, having fans here and beating them would be so much sweeter. And I think, um, to me, it's a really special game because that was my last game before I went out with surgery. So it's just, it just always elect electric weekend. Here's your point guard for the undefeated, by the way. 13-0 CU women's basketball team. Jalen Sherrod coming up next to Stampede. We're talking with our head coach, J.R. Payne. Corner, Hollingshed. Good on the three. It's a long break and a lot of players dealing with returning from issues. Sherrod played their first eight games, won five of those eight and then had seven in a row, either canceled or postponed. Jalen Sherrod, three, right in this basketball game. Foreman, quick release, yep. Just into the fourth quarter, bounce pass on the run. Foreman scores it, Jalen Sherrod. Well, there's some more highlights for the Colorado Buffaloes as they improve the 13-0 in the season, knocking off UCLA right here at the event center. We continue to stand paid head coach J.R. Payne, unblemished. Woo! got some momentum going right now. We do. We are thrilled to have
have momentum. Any time of the year you want momentum, but if you can have that going into conference play, we're feeling pretty good. Do you see that in their team? I mean, as you kind of go on through this schedule, you rack up the wins. Do you see increased confidence? Absolutely. I think we're very confident right now. I think we. I think earlier in the year we knew we could defend, you know, and now we know that we can score, we can rebound, we can truly compete with anybody. Where do you think you've improved offensively as this year's gone on? Yeah, I think our pace has gotten better. We talk about pace a lot. You know, in the beginning of the UCLA game, it wasn't great, but it's something that our team knows. If we can do this, we can still be aggressive offensively. Yeah. You know, sometimes in basketball, we talk about passing and catching, right? It yeah. seems like it should be so basic. Yeah. But there are teams that are good at that, which yeah. makes them very good offensively. Yeah, certainly. And, and making layups. Yeah. You know, in the beginning of the UCLA game, we had great looks at the basket. We were missing them. You know, we yeah. said those are going to fall. Just keep being aggressive. Keep playing defense, and we're going to be fine. With UCLA, this game was pretty tough uh, back and forth. You yeah. seemed like you had about a three, four point lead for a good time of the game. Yeah. Late in the third quarter, you broke it open. Yeah. Talk about that threat. Well, we called a couple things. They got Frida an open look and Maya an open look. Yeah. Um, and down the stretch, when they can hit back to back threes, Jalen's hitting them downhill. I thought that really opened the game well, up. When Maya hit that, by the way, she hadn't had one before. Right, right. And right. You're kind of wondering, well, where's Maya? We expect Maya. Yeah. You know, death taxes of Maya Holly's shift. Yeah. She hit that one, kind of, kind of breaks the lid off. That was, yes. And we sure needed it. You know, at that moment, I think that opened the game up and everybody got excited and then it was just finished. I mentioned it's been a while since the Buffs have beaten the Bruins, so a great win. Colorado now 13 0 in the season. We continue with J.R. Payne. Jalen Sherrod had a career high 25 for yeah. Talk about her development, how she's coming along. Yeah, Jalen is just, you know, her mantra is will over skill. You know, and so anything she puts her mind to, whether it's become a better defender, become a better free throw shooter, get a 4.0, whatever it is, she's determined young lady. You know, and so I think she's really poured a lot of effort into improving her overall game, and we're seeing the fruits of her labor. You know, we just talked to her the previous segment here on the show, and I asked her about her growth, and she said, last year when I was hurt, sitting and watching helped yeah. her. Yeah. You know, we talk about mental reps. I always wonder if that's true. She said she thought she gained a lot from that. Yeah, I think so, too. And Jay, you know, some people get injured and they just sit on the sideline. Jalen took a really proactive approach. She wanted to come in in meetings, listen to what we're talking about in timeouts, you know, at halftime, things like that. She wanted to know, how do I coach? What does it look like? Um, and I think her IQ really grew from that. When the victories pile up, you go from being the hunter to the hunter, right? People uh, yeah. come in and say, hey, we're playing an undefeated team. Yeah. Your team kind of got that eye of the tiger, if you will? We do, but I think our coaching staff, we're the ultimate underdogs, you know, anywhere we've ever been. We could be 30 and 0, and we're still going to find a way to make sure we're the underdog going in. This week, the Buffaloes remain home. Big week. You've got two games in the Pac-12. Cal and yeah. Stanford coming in. You yeah. know what that means in this league. Yeah, oh, yeah. Every game is tough. You know, I think it's Stanford Friday night. They're number two in the country. They're always good. They have a lot of veterans back. Um, you know, they should have the target on their back, but yeah. it should be a really great matchup. Yeah. Your, your, your team, though, I'd, I'd imagine they enjoy that challenge. I mean, obviously, yeah. you beat them here last year. Right? Sure, so they know sure. what that's all about. Yeah, they know it's possible, certainly. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we love a good challenge, and we love to, to play in the Pac-12. Love it. Hey, he's the head coach of the undefeated Colorado Buffaloes, J.R. Payne, doing a phenomenal job right now. As you put a wrap this week at the Buffalo Stampede, I'm voicing the boss, Mark Johnson. We'll talk to you next time.